The next block we are going to do is the inferior alveolar block. And this is blocking the whole mandible. The, the other one we shared was blocking the whole maxilla, including soft tissue, bone, periodontal ligament, everything you need. Okay. So what you have to consider in the blocking the mandible. So you have to know this anatomic landmark. This is the angular process. And you can palpate that on yourself and on your patients. And the theory is that this for amen, where the inferior alveolar nerve goes into, is placed half the length from here. The last molar should have been a tooth here. From distance, distance to here. So you have to go halfway in with your needle and place your local block. And that sounds nice in theory, sounds very easy, right? But when you have a patient on the table and you have a long needle and you start to put it into tissue, you lose track of how far you have put it in because it's not like a needle has annotations on it saying, oh, now you're half and, and so on. So that's why you make your own mark where, how deep it needs to go. Okay. I have a very nice trick for this. So if somebody, not me, <laughs> very clever person, found out that actually the distance from here to the foramen equals the distance from the ventral border of the mandible to the alveolar bone height at the level of this molar, the first molar. And that's the same in cats. And this is, this, when I found out this, this was mind blowing and it changed the approach to, and changed the way I was more confident in doing, delivering these nerve blocks because I used this information. Okay, so this length is what you want. So what I do practically, so you have this dog on the table, see? So you palpate the angular process, which is right here. You want to block this mandible. So this is your angle. Okay, so this is your angle. You've got the last tooth here, and you want the angle of the needle to go in this direction to the processus alveolaris here, okay? And you want to go half the distance. So what do I do? I measure the height with my periodontal Pro, see how deep is it. Then I place the needle <clears throat> next to it and I make it bent, bent right at that length. And this is a very nice trick. I want to pause this here. So now we have the intra oral look. This is what you see when you have to do this block. So see, my finger is still on the alveolar process. So that means you have your direction. You know you have to place it in here and the exact spot where you need to put your, your needle in is right below where the, where the gingiva stops. So see all this tissue right here surrounding the teeth is the gingiva. So, and this down here is mucosa. This is soft. And this is very hard and this is attached. So if the dog does, does not have these teeth, then you still know where to place this block because just look for where the gingiva stops. So even though you previously extracted those teeth, maybe you need to go in and extract this one. You may do the mistake of placing the block here. You have to, the gingiva doesn't uh, it, it doesn't uh, shy away. It doesn't get removed once the teeth are gone. So look where the gingiva stops. Go about one millimeter down. The angle is this straight toward the angular process. And you know how deep to go. You know exactly how deep to go because you made your bend. And what you do is you scrape the needle. You, you, you place it so it scrapes along the inside of the mandible, the bone. And this is your length, and you aspirate, inject, 
a little bit of bleeding, no problem, not a big, not a big problem. So this is, you know, I, I, I really like this approach because it just, it just works all the time. And once you have some experience in doing this, you don't really think too much about angles and so on. Uh, you just do it. I think about we need, if we go back and look here, this angle is about not quite 45 degrees, about 30 degrees. So you can always think of like this. If your needle, if your needle hop is placed on the on the molar, you you are kind of in the correct direction. You know. So this is just remember these pictures. Awesome. And again, same cadaver. Um, this is where you place the needle in here. You go straight down into this nerve right here. This is the inferior alveolar nerve entering the mandible on the lingual side. So this is where you want to place your anesthetic block. Uh, what you don't want to do is go too lingual, meaning that you will accidentally hit the lingual nerve right here. This is a lingual nerve. So if you don't scrape against the bone down here with your needle, if you accidentally put it a little bit too lingually, you may anesthetize the tongue. I've done this once as far as I know. And the only thing that happened was the dog was really not very good at eating or drinking. The tongue was kind of hanging out. Fortunately, it was not biting the tongue, making it bleed. Um, but you know, I've never seen, in 10 years of doing dentistry and, and uh, nerve blocks, I've never seen a dog or cat uh, biting into the tongue because I accidentally anesthetized it. So it's extremely safe. As long as you have these little guides and landmarks to follow, then you will be perfectly fine. Another approach that I've also been using